Hi everyone, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, wherever in the world you are and whatever your day has had in it so far, uh, we're very glad that you've chosen to join us for this interesting session. I'm Michael Hartland, I'm part of the SNAPCOMS team here, and it's my pleasure to be uh, introducing this webinar topic for you today, which is around building a five-star employee experience. Uh, it's certainly true in these days that uh, businesses around the world, whatever industry you're in, um, wherever you're in the world you are, uh, no business achieves anything without their employees. They're absolutely critical to, uh, to achieving greatness, to, to growing, uh, and so uh, the topic of employee experience is an absolutely critical one in these days, uh, which is fortunate because that's why we're here to, to, to go through today. Uh, and we have a couple of fascinating speakers who will, uh, who will, who take, will take you through this. Uh, so let's meet them. Uh, so on the left of screen here, we have Kathy Leach. Uh, she is a communications and strategy specialist from research agency Basque Partners. Um, amongst Kathy's, uh, Kathy's history, she's worked for a number of, of major organizations uh, around the world. Uh, she even worked with the US Olympics team um, in a communications and research capacity, I think, not in a competitive capacity. Um, Kathy was uh, the lead on the research that we'll be taking you through shortly. Uh, and certainly uh, the, the expert on when it comes to, to research and applying that in a, uh, in a corporate environment. And on the right of the screen, we have Karen Silliers. Uh, she is a senior communication specialist at Snapcoms. Um, Karen has also have a, a wealth of experience in the corporate environment. She's worked in the, in the United States, in the UK, in Europe. Um, Kathy's, oh, sorry, Karen's passport has been stamped with stamps from all over the world. She's worked just about everywhere. Uh, and so she has a wealth of experience, particularly in the financial services uh, and in major uh, corporate environments. Uh, and she'll be taking us through uh, a lot of the, the research and how that applies in environments today. First, just a really quick bit of housekeeping though. Uh, so this session will be recorded. Uh, we'll share it with you after the recording, uh, along with a white paper, which goes into um, employee experience uh, and all of the, the research in a little bit more detail. Uh, it's a big topic, we can obviously only take you through a certain amount of that uh, in this session, uh, but the white paper will delve into it in a lot more detail. Uh, everyone's going to be placed on mute for the duration, uh, just so that we can make sure we can hear the, uh, the presenters. They've got a lot to deliver, so we want to make sure we can hear them, so everybody's going to be on mute for the duration. And if you've got any questions, unfortunately, because we haven't got enough time to do a Q&A in this session, um, but however, you can send an email to Karen, uh, her email address is on screen there, and we'll also repeat it at the end. Uh, or you can visit our website, um, Karen will come back to you, or one of the team will come back to you within 48 hours. Uh, so if you have questions, don't feel as though you can't ask them. Okay, and just before I hand over to, to Karen to really get into the meat of it, here's what we'll be talking through today. Uh, so four, four areas um, particularly that we'll, be, that we'll be covering. We'll be looking at what employee experience really is. What, what does this term actually mean? Um, we, we hear a lot about it. It's, uh, it's something which matters to organizations, but, but what is it really? It's quite a nebulous thing to, to, to get your hands around. So what is it and what actually influences it? There are going to be aspects with, of all organizations which influence employee experience both, posi both positively and negatively. Uh, we'll look into what those are. And then once we know what employee experience is, what it is today in today's workplaces, we'll analyze what the impact of employee experience is on organizations. Because in the same way that employee experience is influenced, it also has an impact on organizations. And that can be for the good and for the bad. So we'll analyze the impacts of those. And then to make some sense of all of this and to actually translate it into something that you can use in your organizations, we'll introduce a new employee pyramid of needs framework, uh, along with some communication tactics, which will help you to translate this framework into actual actionable things that you can use in your workplace to improve employee experience, to identify those things that matter to employees uh, and to improve their experience with working there, which obviously benefits them and it benefits the business. So there's a lot to get through there, so I'll pass over to Karen now to take us through uh, the first couple of slides. Well, thank you very much, Mike. And, you know, if we look at the past 18 months, not only has there been considerable change for all of us around the globe, but it's now nearing the end of 2021 and there's still change happening around us. We know right now that there are many companies who are battling to get their employees back to the office. And we also understand that, you know, in the past, camaraderie and relationships with co-workers really helped us get through tough patches. But my feeling is that 
um, now that many employees are working remotely and they're isolated both from their peers and from the um, brand messaging, which is around a working environment, offices, display screens at the canteen and the like, it's becoming more and more difficult to ensure a happy workforce and including you know, what workers need in terms of employee experience. So it falls on us as employee communicators to work even harder every day to purposefully fill that gap. And what we know is that employee experience is a moving target and we need to accept that and do the best we can with the knowledge that we have and the research that's available around us. So probably the best way to look at the real implications of employee experience, both positive and negative, is to look at two sides of the spectrum. So on the screen here, you can see two employees, both working in the insurance sector and same age, been working for the same length of time, but John on the right hand side has a very different employee experience compared to Jane on the left. So if we look at John, whose company has very strong focus on employee experience, let's have a look at what that means to the company. John is actively engaged in his job. He, he's creative, he uses his ideas to solve problems for the company. He's very linked in to the employee's mission, the company's mission, their goals, their uh, objectives, and he's very timeous when it comes to meeting deadlines. On the client side, he delivers an extraordinary client customer service. And what the benefit of that is that his customers continue to refer new business to him. Financially, what that means is looking at, the, at the, the stats that are available very widely, what you'll see is John's firm is likely to have a four times higher revenue growth year on year compared, compared to Jane. Let's have a look at Jane's situation. She is seeking another job. Every day she's on job portals searching for the next best thing. She's one of 85% of employees who are not actively engaged. In terms of deliverables, she tends to only do the bare minimum. For the first time in her career, she's missing deadlines and her customers are unhappy. And what does that translate to for the organization or for the industry? Well, at a US level, she is contributing to avoidable costs of between 450 and 550 billion dollars per annum. So you can see that's considerable and the value of employee experience just can't be overestimated. Well, let's have a look at why this is. I mean, if, if employee experience, both positive and negative, is, is so clear, then why is it so hard to manage and to get right? Well, what we've seen is never before have human resource professionals been under as much pressure. It's a, a definitely an ever, ever changing role on a day to day basis. And we find human resource professionals are jugg juggling multiple priorities. That's the biggest feedback we get from our HR clients is that it's just really difficult nowadays to pinpoint exactly what their jobs are about because it's ever changing. So they're juggling multiple priorities, but they're also dealing with the workforce who is dealing with the greatest disruption to their working environment than has they've ever seen before. So what does that mean? Well, it means that employees, we, we're looking at shifting demographics, we're looking at fatigue, at reprioritization of personal values, of a focus on health and well being, and also rising expectations. Your employees are customers too, and they're expecting what they get from Airbnb and Uber from their employers as well. And so these expectations are ever rising. 
And what this results in is, as Forbes was speaking about last week, we're looking at either the great resignation and that war on talent, or for organizations that get it right, we're looking at a potential great attraction. And it's all about how we understand the current environment and how we respond to it. Let's look at the definition of employee experience. And maybe first I'll just um, cover our research a project that we ran with BASC partners in June this year. So we partnered with BASC uh, to undertake some employee experience analysis for us, particularly in the United States. And in this instance, we were focusing on a very narrow vertical. We were looking at financial services, asset management, banking, insurance, and fintech. So that's where we started. And Kathy and the rest of her colleagues at BASC did a very detailed research project for us doing both quantitative and qualitative research with 200 HR directors and levels above that. And the, the questions are really to say, uh, what does employee experience look now after all this change of the pandemic? What do individuals need to focus on and how do we get it right? Has it changed at all? What was interesting is that we compared the research that BAS did to other regions and other sectors. And it was really interesting to see that those identical themes and insights played out. Maybe just to mention a couple of things that differed when we looked globally, is we saw that India showed the highest employee experience globally. Those employees seem to be very happy with their employees and uh, employers, and it, it had a lot to do with leadership. And then, you know, you look at Singapore and Malaysia, and they have responded to the changes in employee experience quite um, proactively, and that most of those organizations, the larger ones, have realized the importance of leadership skills and how that affects employee experience. And so they've invested considerably in training their management and leadership layers. But, but let's get back to this definition of employee experience. And you know, this differs from engagement. And over the past month, I keep reading about engagement. It seems that the word ex employee experience or that term has changed more to employee engagement. And I think that has to do with many workers now working remotely and that battle for mind share. How do we know that employees are actually engaging with our content? They've got our brand front of mind. But the important thing is, yes, engagement is important, but employee experience is really what makes people, enables people to contribute magic to the organization. How do we tap into their discretionary energy? How do we encourage them to go the extra mile? How do we encourage them to come up with an idea on a walk or while reading a book? My personal view is that people come up with those gems and those nuggets when they're happy and their subconscious allows them to think about how they can contribute more positively to their jobs, which already bring them, them so much enjoyment and, and personal satisfaction. So, with that, uh, in terms of employee experience and, and the context around that, what we did with our interview respondents is we, we showed them on the right of screen, you can see this definition from, McKin from McKinsey. And, and employee experience from McKinsey is defined as companies and their people working together to create personalized, authentic experiences that ignite passion and tap into purpose to strengthen individual, team, and company performance. So yes, we asked the respondents, did they agree with that definition? And, and everybody agreed, yes, definitely, that, that is still um, how they would ex explain employee experience, but they definitely added to this, and they added to this by including purpose and passion, by including connectedness with the employer, with including belonging, about productivity and how do employees actually feel that they've done a good job for the day and they've actually contributed value. 
it's about growth and development. It's about authenticity and it's about their personal well-being. So that was all um, very interesting. And I loved one of our respondents who said, as the world imploded over the last 18 months, employees looked for safe harbor emotionally. And, and that just highlights the very important role that an organization or the employer now plays in an individual's life. It was always an important component in terms of bringing in, um, putting food on the table, but it now it's intrinsic in that person's feeling of, of psychological safety. And I'll hand over to you now, Kathy. Thanks, Karen. As Karen said, uh, employee experience is important and companies recognize that. 70% of the HR professionals we spoke with said that a positive employee experience would have a positive impact on overall company experience. And what was the experience of firms who deliberately focused on employee experience? A net 53% saw an increase in employee trust after implementing a program. 51% saw an improvement in their external corporate reputation. And 49% saw an increase in productivity. These are big numbers. And when we asked companies what their key corporate priorities were, employee experience was number two, but virtually the same numerically as number one, which was improving productivity. And that's because, as one senior HR person said, a good employee experience leads to a good customer experience, better customer experience, better profit, better business, healthier business. So it's a virtuous cycle. So what was the impact of COVID on employee experience ratings? We were not surprised to see a big decline in, in employee experience ratings during COVID. For most employees, the pandemic was a very negative experience. We were surprised to see employee satisfaction recovering, and as of June, even higher than prior to the pandemic. Our theory on this is that companies' responses to the pandemic and the new approaches many experimented with around internal communications had a net positive impact. As an HRVP told us, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Also, employees saw how their, their leaders responded to the pandemic and had much more contact with them. Reflecting on their improved employee satisfaction ratings, another HR professional said, chaos exposes leadership, it doesn't create it. And a lot of our people really rose to the occasion. We saw some very consistent trends with employee experience. Surprisingly, despite how many people said import, uh, employee experience was important, the majority of HR directors didn't have a formal written strategy. In fact, only 54% set objectives. When there was an employee experience program, it was managed collaboratively across the organization, mostly led by HR. Employee satisfaction surveys remain the, the major way of measuring employee engagement used by 73% of companies surveyed. Rebies are out and empathy is in. Benefits, empathy and purpose, along with flexibility, are now much more meaningful to employees. There was also an interesting dynamic in internal comms messaging. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was a real focus on job enablement. So message around where do you get your computer? Where um, is, what is the, the company policy on COVID? So really, how do people continue to work as they were um, set to work remotely? But as the pandemic uh, dragged on, there was a significant um, decrease in employee engagement and satisfaction. And so companies switched and flexed into emotional messaging around purpose and culture to increase connectivity and engagement. And it was a smart choice. Emotional messaging is important. According to a recent Gallup Global survey, 75% of disengaged workers are looking for new roles. And employee engagement is the primary reason for leaving, not pay or perks. Going forward, as we continue to deal with the pandemic, we'll continue to need a mix of these functional and emotional messages to keep employee engagement and satisfaction. 
We also saw some interesting leadership trends. Perhaps not surprisingly, given the impact of COVID on employees, leadership comms took center stage in the last 18 months. We saw three trends. First, greater access to leadership, much more frequent updates, one-on-one -on -one calls, town, virtual town halls, and really personal connections. There was even one story of a CEO who made a toilet paper delivery to an employee who was homebound after one of these one-on-one -on -one calls. We also saw authentic storytelling, leaders sharing human moments and employee stories. We heard multiple stories about leaders sharing their pets with employees and their children with employees, sometimes even on a planned basis. We saw new channels being experimented with, whether pre-taped videos, virtual business meetings, virtual social gatherings, all in a, in a, a, a real push to, to maintain the connectivity in a virtual world. And internal comms is a key driver of employee experience. In fact, 82% of our respondents felt that inter internal comms are important to employee experience programs. Good internal communication was the third highest factor leading to a positive employee experience. And I would argue that communications are inherent in the top two, leadership and employee wellness and support. Poor communication is the number one factor leading to a negative employee experience, higher even than poor training and role-related stress. We saw a common theme around uh, trying to break through, trying to get employees to really listen to the messages. Even critical messages like COVID-related pay or vacation time messages were being ignored by employees. And so there was this dichotomy of internal comms is critical to a, a good employee experience, but employees are not paying attention. And so HR leaders are really look, were really looking for solutions. Um, key themes around reaching employees on multiple devices. They come into work using multiple devices as well as doing them, uh, using them in their personal lives. How do we create content quickly and cost effectively uh, in, a, in a world where um, outside events are changing rapidly? How do, um, how do HR professionals find new channels and new approaches to break through to employees? And at the end, how do we measure the impact of internal comms programs? Companies are investing a lot of money in trying to reach their employees and they want to know what is working and what is not so that, that they can adapt. At the end of the day, they want to ensure that their messages cut through the noise. Karen, over to you. Thank you, Kathy. So, you know, now we know that employee experience is all about understanding and providing for today's mix of generations, needs, working locations, job roles, abilities, and we know it's a moving target. But at the end of the day, the root of all of this bundle of needs is in common is a common set of human needs and we all know about Abraham Maslow and his 1954 uh, paper covering motivational psychology theory and his uh, study showed that human beings have a hierarchy of needs that need to be satisfied and what was interesting as we did this research was it was very clear to see that the same applied for employee experience and engagement. So the more that these human needs and job needs are met and addressed, the more productive employees become. And um, just as an example, Harvard, Harvard Business Review recently showed that happy employees are 12% more productive. Well, that's pretty significant. Our research um, showed that there are six core areas that affect employee experience, engagement, and productivity. So you can see them on the screen here. And what's important is that they, each of these rungs, each of these six layer, layers in the pyramid of needs has a functional component and an emotional dimension. And as Kathy was saying, over the last 18 months, companies have flexed so in the beginning, it was all about technological capability. So could you work from home? Did you have the connectivity? And did you have the right setup in terms of desk and chair? But 
But then what happened is we noticed that employees were really battling with the isolation and about having to manage their time and the blurring of um, home and work responsibilities. So we flexed to the emotional side and we started speaking to employees about their well-being. But then we started to see a, a, a ramp up in cybersecurity breaches. And there again, we flexed back to the functional side. It was all about cybersecurity. And before long, we saw that employees were actually burning out. There's massive fatigue. So we flexed back to the emotional side. And how could we have Zoom free Fridays? Or could we uh, minimize employees reaching uh, emails, reaching employees after hours and the like? So as you can see here, it's about a balance. And, you know, we can train an employee on a system, but if we include um, the cultural inclusion, then they're not going to perform at their peak. And the same thing around corporate and social responsibility. We think you can include them and have, allow them to have a sense of belonging. But if they don't understand the, the processes to be followed, equally, they will have a very poor employee experience and it will erode their self-esteem. So in terms of balance, if you do focus on both dimensions, functional and emotional communications, across all six levels of the pyramid of needs, you can be sure that you will have greater retention, you will have greater productivity, it will result in improved attraction of talent externally, and lastly, your employees will thank you for it. So let's have a look at the first rung, and this is all about job stability and security communication. And really, in, in a nutshell, this is about clarity on role scope, employee responsibilities, and, and company strength. So if we look on the left, um, and you can see those images on the screen are just some of our SNAPCOM's uh, communication messages and formats that, that we provide and, and offer. But you can see on the left, under functional, uh, on this rung of the pyramid, we're talking about role expectations and accountability communications. So we know that unclear job expectations are a major cause of burnout. So that uh, lends itself to communication. The next is compensation and benefits. So this is about simple communication that allows employees to uh, understand what's owing to them. It's clear and it's in real time. So there's always support that's available to them. That's very important in these cons. And the next one is brand reputation. So especially in today's day and age, uh, and the younger generations are very focused on their personal brand. And we know that the corporate brand is an extension of an individual's personal brand. And that's why comms around this theme have to be transparent and frequent. So if there's any risk, you know, be open and transparent. We need to communicate often and frequently about our successes as a brand and around anything that they need to be aware of. On the right hand side, we're talking here on the emotional level of job stability and security around the recruitment and induction process. So that's very important that this is well managed and it, you know, it gives an employee the comfort that they've joined um, a proper organization and it sets them up for success. Um, other ideas around uh, that level that we can look at in terms of internal communications for this run would be um, recruitment surveys. And that is for both in, uh, recruited employees which have been successfully hired and those that have lost out on jobs. It's, um, one can never underestimate how damaging it is for a company to have a poor a recruiting experience and the word of mouth that transcends the market um, from that person who's lost out on a role. All right, let's look at the next one. Next one is all around job enablement communication. And what this really in a nutshell is about is to make sure that our employees are equipped, they're trained and they're supported to work effectively and safely. You can see some of our templates that we've got going there on the left and right. 
um, got some screen savers, got a quiz, got a, a survey about training. Uh, that's an RSVP for a training. Um, so it allows that two-way communication. But under job enablement comes on the functional side, these are we talking here about uh, communication around the working environment. Are we ensuring that employees have a comfortable environment? Are we encouraging breaks? And if we, there's a churn happening or a building move that's happening, are we giving employees sufficient notice? Um, because sufficient notice is about respect and it's about building trust between both parties. The next opportunity there is around physical and psychological safety comms. And that's a, uh, the area for internal comms around procedures uh, to be followed, uh, around anything that threatens an individual's safety. Um, and, and also support during change initiatives. Are they getting psychological support in the event of change that will encourage their uh, behavioral change? Thirdly is comms around resources and tools that are available. So, you know, it's all about what is essential in order for an individual to do a job well. And what's important here is that we allow the opportunity for employees to ask questions. And, and that just helps them to feel that they can make mistakes, they can ask stupid questions, and they'll be supported. And it's only through um, that learning that they end up being proficient in their role. On the right hand side, we're talking about training and support and empathy. And again, that the empathetic, and empathetic component of this theme for communications is really something that fosters trust. And if, if I think about other opportunities for job enablement communication, we'd be looking about um, training on safety processes, um, alerts in emergencies, emergency situations across devices, wherever they may, may be. Um, it's around change communications before, during and after change experience. And as you said, training supports on a regular basis, you know, sending out training uh, requirements, um, opportunity notifications, at least on a six monthly basis. The next one is all about leadership and vision. We've got a couple of videos on the screen from the CEOs, a couple of um, surveys, some, some value messaging, some town hall messaging on, on digital display devices. But what we're talking about here is connection with decision makers and alignment of personal and company values. So let's have a look on the left hand side first. So in terms of functional communications around leadership and vision. Here we're talking about strategic clarity and you know there it's, it's about visible leadership because when your leadership is visible it helps you to cement your connection with the company and the company's set of goals which which become a common set of goals and and transparency so transparent communication helps individuals see the people behind the top decisions on the right hand side we're talking about values and ethics so this is about alignment of personal and company values. It's that compass that allows individuals to know which way to go when there's some level of, of ambiguity. And I never forget early on in my career, um, a private bank I was working for was absolute sticklers about the company's values and, and goals. And our CEO came to speak to our team and spoke about our number one priority being that we break China for the client if it's required. And he said this every time he met with us on a quarterly basis, and it became our, our North Star, our compass. So if on a Sunday you had a call from a client and he asked you to drop documents off at his home because he needed something urgently, there wasn't even a question. There was no one to check whether that was the right thing to do. You knew that your CEO had shared that breaking China for the client was an unwritten rule and you did it. And that just allows everybody to, to fly in information. And then next would be opinions and feedback. And you know, especially for Gen Z and millennial generations, um, that sense of feeling heard is critically important. 
And so the communication that we disseminate around that theme really needs to allow that two-way feedback channel. And when we do ask for feedback from our employees and they do make recommendations around change that's required, it's very important that we acknowledge those requests. Um, one of the people that we interviewed in our research said that they have a company policy that after an employee um, survey, they will go back to all employees within one week to summarize the findings, um, the requests, and provide an action list, which they then report on on a regular basis. So it's, it's again, it's about mutual respect. Right, our fourth level of the, the pyramid is all around community and culture communication. So here we're talking about camaraderie and unity, a sense of belonging within teams and across a company. So let's have a look first on the left hand side, we're talking about a professional network and cross functional collaboration. So, you know, what came out a lot in, in our research was that uh, particularly younger employees are looking for opportunities for growth and development. And by communicating around a professional network that is available, it certainly uh, uh, promotes opportunities for, for mentoring. And the same applies for cross-functional collaboration. That doesn't only break, break down silos professionally and personally, but it also allows individuals to see that there are pathways and promotional opportunities, um, cross functionalities that they, they may not have been aware of before. If we look on the right hand side, we're talking here about diversity and inclusion and, and uh, personal relationships. And I read recently that we, we have historically looked at diversity and inclusion as only really looking at gender and possibly race and physical abilities. But there is actually now that we are incorporating individuals working remotely more widely and really understanding what makes them tick. We need to know that inclusion also means accommodating both married and divorced and single individuals. Uh, employees who are dealing with grief, with trauma, individuals who are recovering addicts. What about extroverts and introverts? Um, those who come from different backgrounds. Um, all of these really wrap up into a term that I love, which is around making sure that your culture is synonymous with humanity. I just love that. And you know, if we look at personal relationships um, as a second point there, yes, we all know about functions and team building, but I think when we, when we have a look at, at what inclusion really means, when many of these events are virtual, it is usually the extroverts which will grab those opportunities and participate. But when we really want to include introverts in those type of events, sometimes we need to make those mandatory because we know with introverts is they, they'll attend if it's mandatory. They wouldn't have done it possibly if it was voluntary and um, they'll enjoy it. All that will happen is after the event, they'll they'll go into their quiet space to recharge. But it's very important that those team building events are equally inclusive of, of every type of person in the organization to really get the full benefit of it. One other point to mention on this is one of the um, interviewees mentioned that they have a, a networking uh, process that they use in their organization, which is they have something called um, speed connecting. So it's kind of like a, a speed dating um, solution where they, anybody who subscribes to the program will be connected randomly once a week with a new employee in the organization and just 15 minutes to shoot the breeze, chat about what they do, what they're about, where they live, and apparently just having wonderful results for them. Just an idea. Let's have a look at the the penultimate layer, and this is around purpose and esteem communication. So it's about self-worth, recognition of contributions to the wider social picture. And, you know, if we look on the left under functional, this is about recognition and, advance, and advancement. So it's about 
bolstering a sense of belonging and, and a feeling that employees have made a difference. So it strengthens unity with the company's purpose. Who doesn't like a pat on the back after all? On the right hand side, we're talking here about manager relationships and opportunities to influence and also corporate and environmental social responsibility. And what we know about these is we need to give employees the opportunity to drive change, big or small. So do, are we giving employees an opportunity to be heard? Are we showing that them that their opinions matter? Are they we showing them that, that we are allowing them to participate in the development of the company's future? Particularly millennials and Gen Z have a very strong desire for purpose from their jobs. So some examples um, that you know we can share around opportunities for communications in this area would be updates on the progress of social and environmental responsibility programs. Um, and what about an open mic speaking opportunity? Um, what about innovation competitions? All of these allow individuals to make a difference and to be seen and heard. And then the pinnacle of the employee experience pyramid of needs is about delight. And you can see that's purely an emotional uh, angle uh, to the pyramid. And here we're talking about really levity, humility, and unexpected wow moments that enrich working. So, you know, what it does, humor, for example, breaks the monotony of a formal work environment. And, and what it does is when you include a little bit of humor and um, humility to your communication, especially from leadership. What it does is it allows employees to just relax their shoulders and feel it's okay to try new things here. If I fail, the company doesn't take itself too seriously and I'd rather try than not try at all. Secondly, surprise, you know, it, it's about injecting some excitement into an otherwise repetitive routine. A few months ago, we were participating in a global town hall and our CEO um, jumped into the call and uh, he had a colleague with him who was playing the guitar. And right, he wasn't very good, but it certainly was an element of surprise. And it just broke the, the monotony of an otherwise pretty routine update on, on company progress. And in terms of brand pride, there are just so many ways and reasons to inject that into an organizational communication program. So really in summary, internal comms is, we know will continue to wear many, many hats. Us as internal communicators will need to be deliberately different, reach staff differently to achieve different outcomes. And you know, that's why internal comms needs a new approach because every communication is competing for employee attention and and really that's why snapcoms comes in our employee internal communication software guarantees 100 percent readership across multiple devices and i'll hand over to you mike Thanks very much, Karen and Kathy. Um, really, really fascinating topic there. I think everyone would agree, uh, and some some great insights. Uh, so there's a lot to digest in there, but um, but just a few quick uh, key takeaways just to summarise some of the main things we've learned. Uh, so firstly, communication it's the single biggest influence on employee experience across good and bad. Uh, poor communication it's the number one cause of poor employee experience, and excellent communication is a great is a a great influencer of great employee experience. So communication and how employees uh, deal with the company, how their experience of working day to day, they are inextricably linked. Secondly, there's a big gulf between the importance of employee experience and having a strategy to focus on it. If you ask uh, many HR managers or, or managers in a business, they might say employee experience. Yes, we we we. We, we back this, uh, it's important to us, but so few of them actually have a strategy to focus upon it. Uh, and as we've seen in this, this presentation, it's proven that those organizations that have a strategy to focus on it, see significant results from their efforts. Thirdly, so the pyramid of employee needs. Uh, so this shows us that we need to address both functional and emotional needs of employees. Uh, it simply isn't enough to focus on just one or the other. 
Um, the things that matter to employees are across a raft of areas and any one of those can be critical for how they view the company and their intentions for, for staying long term. And so these uh, functional and these emotional needs are across these six core areas uh, up that pyramid of needs that, that Karen took us through from, from job stability uh, at the very bottom all the way up to the top uh, with delight and going from that functional functional core area right up to, uh, to the emotional things that people need if they're really going to uh, be fully engaged uh, and delighted with where they go to work every day, which is so important. And finally, just effective communication. So this means formats that cut through. There's so much noise in, in organizations today. There's so many messages coming through. Uh, effective communication will cut through this. They can be crafted quickly. They can reach employees on any sort of device because employees are going to be using a lot. They could be working remotely or in any number of, of places uh, using any number of devices. And equally as importantly, these communications can be measured. So we have to know what's working and what isn't so that we can improve upon it. Uh, so as we mentioned at the, uh, at the top of the presentation, we don't have time for a Q&A, unfortunately, um, but Karen uh, will, uh, will be available to answer any questions that you might have. Her email address is on the screen here. So just feel free to, to drop her a note with anything that you might like to hear more about. Uh, if there's something which has piqued your interest or if you'd like to hear more about Snapcoms, uh, just send Karen a, uh, a message there. Or you, if you're just, just curious, you can pop onto our website with the web address at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, we are always more than happy to, to hear from you and to answer any questions that you might have. But if you've been inspired by some of the things that you've seen uh, and certainly some of the message examples, communication examples that, that Karen took you through, uh, you can, you can find, that, find out a little more. You can actually try it for yourself with, in your organization as well. Uh, if you hop onto the Snapcoms website, you can, uh, you can take a, a free trial. You can take us for a spin. Um, and uh, with doing this, you can, you can see how the Snapcoms communications platform could work in your organization. Um, this is entirely a free trial. You can, you can try it for a month, see how it works. You will get full access to all of our channels. Uh, this ranges from uh, desktop alerts and tickers through to screensavers, surveys, newsletters. Uh, it's the full platform. You get to try all of these channels for yourself. Uh, you can apply your branding and, uh, and use it and see how it would work for you and how it can improve your organization. You'll also get uh, use of all of the ready to use templates uh, that we've created. Uh, and you'll, you would have seen many of these uh, on the screens that, um, that Karen took us through before. So th these are just click and go. You can edit them in seconds and send these messages out to, to your employees. So you can instantly see how this would be able to help you. And with that, thank you very much uh, for taking the time today to, to join us. We hope you found this uh, interesting and useful. Uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is just the tip of the iceberg, really, uh, the tip of the pyramid, if you will. Um, there's a lot more detail that we could go into here. Um, and indeed, if you want some more of that detail, uh, much of it is available in the white paper, which we will be sharing with you along with the recording of this presentation afterwards. So with that, and from myself, Michael, and from Karen and Kathy, we thank you for your time today and, uh, and have a great rest of your day and wishing you great employee experience.